Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of a Crime Page with Bonnet as and Tereas coming to you from Santo Domingo and a beautiful island of uh, Hispaniola. And uh, we're gonna go inside the uh, Hardin Botanico and we're gonna we're gonna see what's going on. Okay, people drive like fucking maniacs here, so I feel right at home. Spent the morning listening to Atlantic Star and the other smooth jams, so I'm all revved up to go in and see what they got going on. But first, we gotta pick up some uh, boletas over there. Okay, so uh, I didn't pick up any boletas. I just uh, I just uh, gave him a little line of talk and got in. That's fine. We're just gonna be here for a minute. Gotta pick up uh, some books and what the shit. Okay, but I do want to address this uh, issue we got right here. Apparently, no one has consulted them uh, about the uh, personal injury liability uh, that could be sustained by this fountain. Okay, as aesthetically beautiful uh, and touching as it is, you got a massive personal injury uh, uh, liability here. Okay, people like Peter Francis Geraci, other ambulance chasers would have a field day here. Okay, or, or just, you know, someone who's just, a, you know, a gold digger. Okay, you know what, if I was if I was an attorney, I would actually be posted up right there, just waiting for someone to do a little wah wah, you know, fall, you know, break their ass, say they hurt their neck, and the next thing you know, you know, you got a good case. So uh, anyway, all right, let's keep moving on. Okay, so the Dominican Republic has about 2,000 endemic species. I, actually, I think that's the whole island, including Haiti too, okay? They got a lot of weird shit going on here. They got cloud forests. They got serpentine geology. They got coastal, sandy coastal plains, okay? www.sandybags.com, all right? But the spot you want to go, if you're trying to learn some new shit, you got to go to the botanic garden, you know, anytime. See what natives they got. They're going to have a lot of uh, horticultural atrocities and shit too. You know, maybe like that bougainvillea. I do love bougainvillea, but I'm just, just being honest here. But uh, they're going to have a lot of the natives too. So we'll check out some of the natives right now. Let's look at this guy over here though. Remember the Acoma linaceae, the monocot family, monocot elite. Look at these. These flowers just closed up, okay? So this is a member of the Acoma linaceae. This is Tradescanthia spithacea. You can see the flowers uh, just come out of these little mouth-shaped brags. Kind of looks like a coin purse. Actually, see that? But they just finished up. They were just going off an hour ago when I came through here, okay? I had to go to the herbarium. Uh, you know, weird everybody. They weren't too weirded out, you know, by the by the uh, the gringo to come in and go, you know, por que mi espanol no es muy bueno, all right? But these flowers were going off when I first came through. Now they're all wrapped up. Okay, look at it. Look at the axial surface on this guy. That purple, that purple underside. Anyway, the flowers, you know, like uh, most monocots, flowers are three maris. You got three uh, petals right there, and but uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't show them to you because they just closed up right now. So. You know, they must not like the heat. Let's see what else they got going on. Hold on, look at this grandiose bastard. Look at this. This is a tree uh, that's somewhat closely related to chocolate. Okay, this is Sterculia, Sterculia apetala. You can see the little flowers on the ground. Look at that, okay? Look, dioecious plants though, of course, okay? And it's, uh, this one appears to be a female. See, no stamens in there. Just that, uh, that stigma. Okay, look at wait, look at this too. Look at the uh, look at the hairs on there. Okay, so this is this was in Sterculiaceae, like chocolate was, uh, but now it's in Malvaceae. It's in the cotton family, the cotton and hibiscus family. Look at this grandiose bastard. So it's native here. It's also native in Central and South America. Here's the damn leaves. Okay, you got the palmate thing going on. Okay, like many members of the, uh, the Mallow family, Malvaceae. See, see five lobes right there. Big ass leaves. And they got the, they should have the stellate hairs, urticating stellate hairs, okay, because you want to, you know, spank somebody. Okay, they sting just a little bit, all right? And it's got the, it kind of looks like a ficus with those buttress trunks, you know? And then, of course, you know, some teen degenerates carved their names into there. They're probably smoking reefer here. I don't know what they're doing. You know, probably smoking reefer right here, carving her name. Oh, Yolanda, I love you so much, whatever the fuck, you know? Uh, what, you know, it's probably some anti-police stuff on there. I don't know, you know. But beautiful tree right there. Beautiful, grandiose bastard. And the flowers are still up there. I just, you know, I can't get up there to show them to you. Look at those inflorescences up there. Look at it. You can't feel the magnetism between us. It's getting a stronger, stronger. Ooh, why don't we do it? So right here, we got a species of pandanus, okay? And these are pantropical, meaning they occur all around the world at the right uh, latitude, which of course is low. It, the equator, they're equatorial, all over. Okay, I've seen some of these in, uh, I've seen some of these in uh, uh, New Caledonia. Okay, you see them 
because I think the seeds float. I think it's how to get around a floating on the ocean currents and with the shit. Notice those roots right there, okay? Just like little strats, okay? Little buttress strats. And of course, well, you got a Talangi up there too. Even more erratic. Look at that guy, just growing right, okay? Just growing right, you know, absorbing the moisture through his leaves, through the trichomes on his leaves and whatnot. And it's, you got this uh, kind of a uh, bark uh, epidermal tissue going, you know, lateral. That's a nice, look, you got little lenticels in there too. Little uh, axillary buds, okay? Wonderful monocot right here. Wonderful goddamn monocots. You're gonna have the parallel venation, you're gonna have uh, floral parts and a number of uh, three. I wish I had a fruit I could show you too. They kind of look like, the fruits kind of look like a pine cone or a pineapple. Okay, nice spiral architecture to them. Also very erotic, okay? Well, I'm getting kind of hot. This grandiose bastard right here, look at that. Coca loba pubescence. Okay, another native. Remember the Polygonaceae, the buckwheat family. The goddamn buckwheat family. Coriaceous leaves, all right? Oh, leathery. Oh, leathery and stiff. Look at the undersides. You got that uh, nice little yellow in them. Look at that beautiful leaf venation. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's nice, okay? Can't get any flowers up there because I think they're too high. Maybe it's done flowering, unless these are them. I can't tell. But here's the here's the uh, here's the bark. So this is this is basically like a tree buckwheat. Okay, I mean it's in a different uh, clade of the buckwheat family, but they're close enough related that you could say closely enough related. You could say it's you could say it's a tree buckwheat. God damn. Okay, and of course, uh, right here you got a species of bowenia, very common uh, in horticulture because of how uh, how ornamental and aesthetically pleasing they are to look at. Okay, this is in the pea family, Fabaceae. Okay, you know, if you're not familiar with plants, you might think this was an orchid or something. It's really, you know, magnificent fucking tree. Smells very pleasant. Uh, notable is that unlike many other members of the pea family, this only has five stamens, not ten. Most uh, most members of the pea family, especially in the subfamily Faboidae. Same uh, subfamily as beans, uh, have 10 stamens. This only has five right there. You see those five pink stamens with the anthers up top looking like little bananas starting to split open. And then right in the middle there, you got that uh, female uh, part, the style and stigma. And it looks like uh, that ovary might have already been pollinated right there. See that green, that green bend in that? That's gonna mature into a little bean pod shaped fruit, okay? And this is actually uh, more closely related to uh, red buds which some of you in a more temperate latitudes might be familiar with than it is to uh, any other members of the pea family. So with red buds together, this forms the subfamily uh, Cercidoideae, okay, the red bud subfamily, all right? And it's due to that whole uh, recircumscription, uh, you know, after looking at the DNA that everybody did in the new legume phylogeny dungeon, okay? Very wonderful, those people, all right? Look at the... Uh, Look at the undersides of those petals. Oh my God, look at the white marches. You know, I was just pissing over there. Okay, just look for a spot to pee in the bushes. Okay, and I looked over, I heard a retching noise. I looked over, I seen two guys looking at me. They were hiding out, I didn't see them. I had no idea they were there. They were in between two of the trees down there. I don't know if they were getting blunted or on a smoke break or what. But, uh, you know, I looked over, they're looking right at me, just kind of disgusted. And so then, you know, I, it's something about me and pissing in botanic gardens. I always get caught and then I end up getting the cops called on me. Maybe it's like a subconscious voyeur thing I got. I don't know. Uh, I'd rather not explore that right now. Okay, now we're over in a bromeliad dungeon. Okay, Aureus de bromeliads. Okay, and we got a species in a genus, Androlepis. And uh, very nice, it's uh, putting out a uh, flower for us. Uh, uh, inflorescence, rather. You can get up and look at the individual flowers right there. Look at a fuzzy calyx. Ah, what do you think pollinates this? Hummers? Some sort of bee? This is indigenous, this is indigenous to Central America, as well as uh, some of the Antilles, which is where I am. Oh, great, it's fucking raining on me. I gotta wrap this up. Look at the color on these. Very easy to get stabbed by these. These are not soft, okay? These are very, uh, very uh, painful to the touch. Rather hard. Look at the leaf margin right there. And of course, they got the whole cam photosynthesis going on. Okay, these grow as epiphytes, so you can also throw them on the ground and do fine. Here's, here's, a, ba here's a beautiful bastard from the uh, Catalpa and uh, Desert Willow family. Remember, Desert Willow is not an actual willow. They're both in the family Bignoniaceae, as is this one. This is the Calabash tree. Crescentia cujete, cujete, if you're a gringo. There's the fruits, got axillary flowers, flowers poked out of the uh, trunk right there. There you can see you got one. Almost got one if you could see it up there. Looks like it's just finishing up. But anyway, they mature into these fruits 
and a uh, you know kind of like a gourd they you know I commonly use them as bowls cups silverware what the shit you got all kinds of uh different uh, epiphytic ferns and what the shit and uh, even a nice uh, bromeliad nice tillandsia popping off up the uh the stomach there. Now these guys that you're looking at are actually cacti. They're in a family cactaceae. So see they got the nice placard and the sign and everything. Okay, this is the national flower of the DR right here. Okay, this is a, the, formerly in the genus Pereschia, a Kiskeana, now it's in a Lewinbergia. Okay, look at that. Look at the spines. Not very inviting. Okay, and of course we're in a dry season right now. Just starting to, you know, just starting to rain. or just starting to get into the rainy season. But since we're in a dry season, most of them have dropped their leaves. Okay? Drought deciduous. And uh, you can see the little succulent, the uh, mildly succulent stems. Okay? And yes, I said leaves. This is a cactus with leaves. Okay? This is a, a rather uh, basal, what you would call a basal lineage of cactaceae. So it's an uh, uh, evolutionary lineage of cactaceae that branched off. Okay, think of like a, a family tree that branched off uh, earlier than any other ones, okay? Like, uh, you know, you normally think of saguaros and uh, mammillarias and shit like that. This is one of the basal members. And, uh, you know, if I could show you the flowers, they're not due to bloom. Uh, I think they I think they already bloomed a couple uh, months ago. Anyway, uh, I have to look when they bloom. Anyway, the, the point is they're not flowering now, but if I could show you the flowers, you'd see it's an obvious cactus flower. Uh, however, these are dioecious. So like cannabis... Uh, these you need you need they need to the outcross okay plants are either uh, male or female individual plants are either male or female so you only find one sex of flowers uh, on each plant and these are these are small ones they get they can get much bigger than this they get upwards of 30 feet 40 feet tall but look at that look at that uh, the trunk very painful now Pereschia the genus Pereschia and Lewinbergia both uh, like I said, our, our basal. So they were, you know, it, it gives us a chance to glimpse, a glimpse at the, what the ancestors of cacti were before they got into the whole stem photosynthesis thing, you know, before uh, before they shed their leaves completely and just started photosynthesizing through their stems. Look at that beautiful Talansi in that one. So anyway, we'll see these in habitat uh, later on, but I wanted to show you because it is one of the most important plants here. It's an endemic of the island of Hispaniola, known, uh, I believe, only from the east of the island. Look at this, there you go. There's another important uh, tree, another another important symbol of uh, national pride here uh, on uh, the island of uh, Hispaniola, okay? This is uh, in the mahogany family Meliaceae. This is Suetinia mahogany, okay? And this, you know, when Columbus, this is the, the island of Columbus first, Land and when he first got here and he was doing his whole you know uh, colonialism and genocide thing this was one of the main trees that was uh you know being over logged over harvested exploited and sent back to europe so the you know the uh, the uh the rich could use it in their bathrooms and well, i don't know what the fuck they were using it for you know but it's it makes a real nice wood okay and because of that you know it's uh it's an area uh, it's it's a species of concern Okay, fortunately, I don't got any flowers I could show you, but uh, you can see what's going on. You got opposite leaves, pinnate opposite leaves. Relatively glossy, no hairs. You know, you know, some some old Italian guys get really upset when you talk shit on Columbus, and and I don't know why. You know, I mean, he was probably a prick. Look at the evidence. It's quite likely he. I mean, you know, he was a prick. You know, that guy was a prick. Okay, most people, just by sheer default, most people were pricks. Uh, at least that they came from Europe and were, you know, members of the upper classes. Most people were pricks in that day. So you're not going on a limb to say that the guy was a bastard. Who cares? You could, you know, you could say, why, why don't why don't these uh, old Italian guys pick new heroes? Okay, what about Gene Krupa? Actually, I don't even know if he was Italian. But let's say Gene Krupa was Italian. That would be the number one, uh, you know, hero you could pick for someone to idolize, Okay. He was smoking reefer back in the day when it was illegal. He's an amazing drummer. I don't know uh, why. I don't know why they got to pick Columbus because he was probably an asshole. All evidence points to him being a massive asshole. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving on down. Okay. All right. This this is a this is another grandiose special I'm about to show you. Another member of the Malvaceae, the cotton family, is indicated by that androgynophore right there. You see that? See that column with all those yellow stamens? And then uh, you got the you know about another centimeter. 
above them, poking out above them, you got the stigma. Look at it, you got five petals, you got five sepals, almost kind of a palmate leaf shape, not quite, almost kind of looks like a ficus with that taper and with the shit, but it's not. This is a member of the genus Thespesia, all right? And there's quite a few species endemic to the Antilles, the islands right here. You know, Puerto Rico uh, has got Thespesia grandiflora, uh, Cuba's got some Thespesia, really fantastic goddamn plant that, you know, I mean, you could see they don't get too big, but you got some, some real banger flowers on there. Okay, no fuzz on that underside, probably because it's so humid they don't need it. You know, it's humid as balls here. I mean, I'm I'm it's it's I'm here in late January. I'm sweating my ass off. It, it almost looks like a hibiscus. You know, it looks a lot like a hibiscus. You know, with that androgynophore. Remember, androgynophore. You got a lot of members of Malvaceae, the cotton and hibiscus family that have them. Okay, you can clearly see all those stamens. Uh, you know, wrapped around uh, that column right there, just poking out the column. You got that, of course, the female part, the pistil and the, stig the, and the stigma, most notably up top. Okay, and you can see him just, you know, you got like a 40 foot tree, just looking like little delicious bells, little pendant bells. I bet you thought I was going to say delicious balls, huh? You sick bastard. You know what I did see once? Thought? We were switching out box cars, refrigerated box cars full of loaded meat at a loading dock. In Oakland once and you know they would get it wasn't just frozen meat it was like the most heinous you know bottom of the barrel floor scrapings chicken feet shit like that I don't know what they used it for I think they were using it to make dog food or something I don't know who the fuck would eat that but anyway uh, it was really nice once every once in a while a crackhead would break into the reefer car and you know carry more boxes he, he'd take more boxes than he could carry and end up dropping them in the yard and then a week later the smell was just amazing I mean you could just permeating the entire rail yard anyway so uh, I was switching them out, switching these box cards out, staying on a loading dock, and I seen written directly across from me on the side of the box card said, Sweet Dick Daddy with the candy balls. And, uh, you know, I don't know what that was about. It wasn't written in any kind of elegance. It was just kind of thrown up there for all to see, just, you know, straight and uh, concise and to the point. Uh, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what it was about, but I was amused by it. So much so that 10 years later, it's still stuck in my head because I have a, a sophomoric sense of toilet humor. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving on. Uh, who was Sweet Dick Daddy? And uh, why did he have candy balls? I don't, you know, I still am pretty, I don't know. I, sorry, I know we've moved on. Okay, this is a, here's an odd one, all right? This is an order Delineales, an order Delineaceae, all right? And this is the Delinea Indica, also known as the, uh, the elephant apple. Okay, you got the edible fruits up there. Look at that. Looks like they got the little bracts coming off. Okay, almost look like a grapefruit, but they got the bracts. And look at those leaves with those prominent ridges. Almost look like a loquat leaf. Okay, now this is not a native. This is a native to, uh, to the Asian continent. But a uh, pretty remarkable tree nonetheless. Look, at it almost looks like a chestnut metal loquat. Look at that leaf, huh? Brick. Anyway, here's one of those uh, fruits of that elephant apple. Okay. Cut that bastard open, get a good cross section. You can see what's going on there. Look at these rinds. Got these overlapping bracts. Okay, doesn't smell too bad, but it doesn't smell too good, so I'm not gonna eat it. All right, I'm not gonna throw it in my mouth. Okay, but then again, durians smell terrible, and they're actually pretty good once you get into them. Okay, you can, uh, you know, withhold from retching upon getting it close to your face. Anyway, look at that big juicy bastard right there. How about that? See, look, they even they got the whole Japanese pagoda thing going on here. Okay, just in case a couple phrases want to have a wedding or something, you know, because you got to, you know, Botanic Gardens got to make their revenue too, you know. Normally, I mean, I hate those stuff, but I can, it's nice in here. You can get some duct tape on the floor and uh, very airy and spacious. Too much lawn though. Okay, let's keep moving on. Okay, you might notice that the family uh, Malvaceae has a lot of diversity here in the tropics, okay? And uh, you'd be correct if you were to make that observation. Here's another uh, member of that family of the cotton, hibiscus, and chocolate family. This is Pseudobombax ellipticum. And it's a shame that we're a little early for these flowers. You can see they're about to uh, pop out right here. It looks like they got about a week or two left in them. They're, it's known as the shaving brush tree because when it does, when this flower does open, you just get a ton of stamens just popping out. I mean, it looks like a shaving brush, like something, you know, you'd, you'd ladder up and slap somebody around with if you had them in a chair. You know, and again, it's uh, you can see it's drought deciduous. We are just coming out the dry season now, but it's still got that uh, that whole palmate thing going on. Palmate uh, leaf structure right there. You can see that right there. 
Okay, massive bastard too. Look at this. I mean, just nice sprawling. Okay, you got some, you know, the teens just you scribing their name in there. Okay, probably they were smoking reefer here, so I don't know what they're doing. But, uh, you know, that's good. Good for them. They got a place to go. Better you hang on the botanic garden and, uh, you know, in a back alley smoking crack or something. So you can see the, the branching architecture here is amazing, too. This is a massive tree. Uh, it's got to smell amazing when it's blooming. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, a really beautiful landscape tree. And they grow this in Florida. I'd imagine they would, you know, probably on some hideous golf course or something. I don't know. There we go. Okay, what you got here is uh, a rubiaceous bastard. It's a member of the coffee family, Rubiaceae. This is Hamelia patens, and it's native here, but it's also uh, quite used, uh, even overused, I might say, in uh, commercial horticulture, but who gives a shit? It's a, it's a stunner, okay? And like uh, many uh, Rubiaceous bastards, it's got the uh, opposite leaves. Well, they're world in this case, but you got the interpetiolar stipules, if you can get up close there and see anytime you're doubting you know you think it might be uh ruby aca but you're not quite sure get in there and look at it and you can see how this, the the stipule goes across the whole width of that uh, the whole diameter of that goddamn stem right there you see that okay and of course opposite leaves you know ruby aca can be confusing they can have four petals they can have five petals okay it's a really it's a rather large family quite species rich in the tropics Okay, most people just know it as, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Kratom and coffee family. You know, Kratom is what all the dopers are using to get off uh, get off drugs, you know. And keeping with the theme of dystopia, you, all, you got the whole uh, opioid crisis going on. Okay, especially in the United States. Especially in the Northeast, it seems. But it's really everywhere. And then here we go. Here we got a member of the Bursaraceae, the frankincense family. This is a Bursara simaruba also known as gumbo limbo fragrant tree like most of the members of the family bursaraceae frankincense and with this shit you got a the elephant tree bursara microphylla from the deserts of southern california uh, and uh, northwestern mexico okay but elephant tree is a common name it can refer to two or three different unrelated plants everything in bursaraceae generally smells very nice okay you could also find bursara microphylla in a southern Arizona. I found some next to an abandoned mine once. Okay, at the northern end of the range, they're mostly Mexican. But uh, you got the pinnate leaves. You can see you got the little berries up there. If I could reach them, I could crush them up, smell them. They smell wonderful. Okay, you get this in Florida too, but to be honest, I'd rather go to the DR than Florida. No offense to Florida. I'm gonna have to go there one day. I'd like to put it off as, uh, as uh, much as possible. And of course, you got the staghorn ferns, the platyceriums, just loving it. Loving that humidity. Look how they just stick on there nice. Okay, they got the warmth, they got the humidity. They grow like weeds. Okay, there you go. There, there's, some of the, there's some of the fruits on that uh, Bursara simaruba, the gumbo limbo. Okay, you just squish those in between your fingers and they smell so nice. They smell like, they smell like some fancy incense, you know? I'm not gonna make any Catholic jokes now. I was gonna, but you know, I've picked on them so, so much in the past year, I feel feel almost kind of bad. So you can see it's drought deciduous, dropped its leaves. It's not dead. It's just like I said, we're just coming out the dry season here. Dry season's December to March. But look at that bark. Look at that fantastic bark. And I bet where you to scrape that, you get some real nice resins too. Smells probably fantastic. Not as nice as some of the other members of the family, which get a little bit more pungent, but it's still, still a, pr a pleasant smell, you know, to a uh, to take in through your olfactory nerves. So here we are back with the coca lobas, okay, coca loba pubescens. Uh, and you just, look at it, you got just some orchids, some epiphytic orchids just deciding to take root right on a goddamn branch right there, even about to go to flower. It's pretty nice. You see that? Just the, the, the seed must just be so tiny, so tiny. I'm gonna go down. Look, those roots are just just wrapped around there nice and of course remember orchid roots are made out of something called velamin okay so they're kind of spongy but some of them can also uh you know many orchid roots actually can also photosynthesize you can see that you see the green in there see the green in the roots right there there's a big bastard right up there see that on a coriaceous leaf 
just right next to the coriaceous leaves of the coccoloba. Coriaceous, just leathery, like a, like a glove, like a leather railroad glove that's been dried out in the sun too long. Look at that mess of roots. Velamin, you got the you got photosynthetic uh, photosynthesis going on down there. You get the photosynthetic pigments, the chlorophyll and shit in the roots. And just the tiniest flower, but we're a little early to catch it. How about that? You know, it's been another one of those days where I forgot to eat. So I'm feeling kind of lightheaded. I, I think I had a piece of a piece of a bagel or something earlier in the day. But I feel a little lightheaded. It's hot as balls. It's humid as a ball sack. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm going to drop, but uh, I still kind of want to get out of here. I'm going to go to a grocery store, and then we got to get out to the cut tomorrow to see what's going on out in Habitat. But let's go over some of the things we, we learned today, okay? There's such a thing as candy balls. Gene Krupa was an Italian. Maybe he was Spanish. Could have been Lithuanian, too. They got some caramel in them as well. Uh, and uh, uh, Coca Loba's a species in a polygonaceae, a big-ass species in a buckwheat family. And... Uh, Look both ways before pissing in a botanic garden. Make sure no one's make sure no one's watching you. Okay, especially if they're going to report you. Okay, that's all I got for you, that's all I got for you today. Once you have a good rest, you even go fuck yourself. Hey, you see this? The fucking chaos. It feels. It doesn't feel too bad. I kind of like it. You got you got uh, you know you got people on fucking mopeds. You know people just. It's like a game of chicken. Just kind. This isn't even that bad. Wait till we get to an intersection. Hate to be a fucking traffic cop here.